So I was holding the brake pedal and the skinny pedal, just letting them burn, and that's probably what did that. I can see that. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the S3 Power Sports Shop, where today Manny is going to show you how to change the brake pads on your Can-Am Defender. Not a big job, but something that everybody needs to be aware of, because you know brakes is important. Let Manny get after it. All right guys, so today I'm gonna show you how to change the brake pads on your Can-Am Defender. Now we're gonna do the front of the vehicle, but what we're about to show you can be used to do the rear as well and to get you through it. We're in the shop today, so we're gonna use the lift and power tools, but you can get this done with hand tools at the house with a simple 15 and a 17 millimeter socket, a screwdriver and a Torx 30 wrench. You can get this monkey wrench in. Now, quit pumping the brakes on this job and let's get it done. So to get your brake pads out of your caliper, you need to release these two Torx T30s from outside the caliper. One thing I like to do is go ahead and loosen them before you loosen your caliper off. It makes things a lot easier to work with. So once you break them loose, you don't have to take them all the way out. The next thing you're gonna do is get your 15 millimeter. Go ahead and get your two bolts that are holding the caliper onto the knuckle. Once you get your bolts off, go ahead and pull back on your caliper and now you have access to your brake pads. To get them out, what we're gonna to need to do is back these T30 torque bolts all the way out. The reason why we broke them loose earlier is so that you don't struggle time to take them off holding it in your hand. Be sure to put your brake caliper up somewhere where it's not suspended from the brake line. Go ahead and get your bolts out of the way. Then you can go ahead and just fold your brake pad up and get it out of its tray. Bring the second one forward and come right out. This is a good time to go ahead and check over your rotor. Make sure that it's not warped, have any heat stress or cracks. If everything looks good, you can install your new brake pads and get back going. So some of the things you wanna look for when you take these brake pads out is make sure you don't have any excess dirt or mud, rocks, anything like that in here. This is a full floating caliper, so it, it needs to flow freely and make sure that this is not seized up so that way it operates and works properly. Per your service manual, it wants you to use an old brake pad to push the pistons back in so you don't damage them. When you put your brake pad in, go ahead and put your two set screws back in there so that it'll help guide the pad through. And then using your C-clamp, you wanna make sure that you get towards the middle of the brake pad and we'll go ahead and get the two pistons pushed in. So when you go install your new brake pads, these are inner and outer specific. So on this particular model, the one without the claw on it, you're gonna put in first. Then you'll take the second one with the hook on it. You put it over your holder pin, slide it down, and now you can reinstall your bolts. So now you can go ahead and put your screws back in. If they're having a hard time going in and don't line up, what you need to do is push down on the brake pad and then it'll slide right in. Once you get it in there, you can tighten it up with your torque wrench. Now, you don't have to tighten it all the way if you don't want to right now, because you're gonna come back and make sure it has a final snug once you get your caliper back on the knuckle. Once you get them opened up, go ahead and hold the brake pads open, slide it back over your disc, and then line your screw holes up so you can get your bolts back in. Now using the torch picks in your service manual, you can go ahead and tighten the calipers back up to the knuckle. So this is the most important part of the job. You need to make sure that your two screws that are holding your brake pads in are torqued down a spec. Once you get done with your brake pads, you wanna make sure that your reservoirs are topped off. So like I said, this is a pretty easy job and straightforward. What we did right here in the front is pretty much the same in the back. It might have a little bit different angles to get to, but generally speaking, it's the same thing. All we gotta do is throw the wheel and tire back on and get back on the trail. So you're saying these things got the Callahan guarantee on the box? Absolutely. Makes sense. All right, so that's another step-by-step -step of Manny walking you through how to put your brake pads on your Defender. If you wanna see many more videos, go subscribe to our YouTube page. Like this one, go check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We're gonna keep showing you how to get it done.